Jay-Z, we in the know you. One, two, three. M-A-G-N-O-L-I-A, of course. Yeah. What's up? Now what you about to like see is up. how I do it, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Magnolia bounce, so just slim to the bone. It don't stop. Who's the realest? Uh, don't get involved in the foolishness, level. I'm trying to tell you what's happening right now. You get involved with the foolish, you might go through that thing you can't handle. I'm a G, I ain't gonna tell you no word a lie, you know what I'm saying? Don't get involved with the foolishness. Believe that. Well, you know what, day? You got a soldier like me, I'm gonna stay solid, baby, to the bone, girl, so you know me. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, the family is continuing to celebrate their loved one this Thanksgiving, nearly two decades after his death. On November 26, 2003, James Tapp, also known as Soldier Slim, was shot and killed right here in New Orleans. In a story you'll see only on WDSU, our Shea O'Connor talked to his family about his legacy. The 3, the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th are all wards of New Orleans' uptown area. Ever since I can remember, the wards and projects of the NO have always at some point had beef that would ultimately lead to wars. New Orleans is so wild there has even been internal wars within the projects and wards that have ended up with multiple casualties. Project Beef isn't always project versus project. Most of the time in projects versus click within opposing projects. James Taft, known as Soldier Slim to rap music fans around the world, known as Magnolia Slim to the city of New Orleans, actually lived on the parkway and in the Noya. In his adolescent years, Slim attended Booker T. Washington High School. Already known for rocking bars and DJs, Slim's name was ringing in the streets. This was during the era bounce music had the scene on lock. At the T, the local rappers out the hood used to do little mini concerts at like lunch and recess. Slim, who was already beefing with the dark side, got into it with Mark Livis, aka the Livis, after one of the little mini concerts. Slim and them ain't just jump on dude for nothing like some would like you to believe. They were actually already beefing. Don't get it twisted. Mark was a live wire. That boy was wilding. Mind you, Mark had ties in the yoke and on the dark side. He wasn't about to let no nigga play with him. A brawl broke out that day. Shots were fired, escalating the already hatched beef even further than it already was. The little back and forth beef shit went on for a hot little minute after the shit that had happened at the T. Two incidents involving Slim would take place during the time of this beef that would nearly take his life. This shit happened so long ago, let me see if I can remember the landscape. So starting from Washington and Claiborne, they had the Pizza Hut right there on the corner of Claiborne in Washington. Pizza Hut little parking lot took up a nice little bit of Claiborne. Then I believe they had like a little vacant area. Then they had like this little white building, I believe was a beauty store. I can't all the way remember. Y'all let me know in the comments. If my memory serves me correctly, there was like a little shoe store or some shit right there in the same block, right there in the middle of the block. I know they had to pay less across the street right there on the corner. I can't remember, man, but anyway, y'all let me know in the comments. Then it was Mickey D's and then Popeye's right there on the corner across from Exxon. We used to always whip through the Exxon to beat the light and slide down Willow. Slim even mentioned it himself in a song. Shoot up towards Claybone, make a left cut through Exxon. Now that I set up the scenery, let's get back to the ep. The beef shit with Mark was on and popping. Slim and his partner stayed strapped in case some shit kicked off. One day out of the blue, 
an elderly white couple while driving up Claiborne would out of nowhere mow Slim down, leaving him stretched out in the streets. Luckily, an OG out the Noya was on the scene and was able to get Slim some help from EMS. Thinking on his feet, the OG retrieved the chopper that Slim was clutching and brought it into the project. Heard on the street was that Slim had just ran down on Amelia Street or was about to run down Amelia Street when he was struck by the car and knocked off his feet. In another incident that took place during the time of the beef, Slim was shot in front of his mom, Miss Linda. The screams of Miss Linda were scared off the gunman. The man that squeezed the trigger was none other than Mark Livis. Slim would ultimately survive the shooting, going on to mention the incident in a verse, long live Slim. It's the late 80s, early 90s. Bounce music is just starting to pop in the city. Some of the names ringing at the time were T.T. Tucker, Juvenile, and Magnolia Slim, whom you know today as Soldier Slim. Like most high schools in the city during this era, at recess, aspiring bounce artists would perform for their classmates. These performances would garner attention from the entire school, something that the students would look forward to. Bounce music was the only thing popping at the time. And young teens were collectively representing their hoods and getting it how they live. The NO is the city where kids get life insurance policies at the age of 12. And by the age of 13, they were slinging that iron. Hood fights and one-on-one -on -one fist fights were also a thing. The real threat came from the retaliation to these fights, which would oftentimes be trigger play. One day after performing at recess, James Tapp, aka Magnolia Slim, would get into an argument with Anthony Libus, aka Lil Libus, nephew of Glenn Libus from the Calio Projects. This argument would turn into a fist fight, which would later turn into trigger play, leading to Anthony being hit in the leg. It is alleged that Slim and his homies were responsible. This shooting would initiate the beef between Slim and Lil Livers. During this time, Slim would be back and forth from the Noya to the Parkway, trying to jumpstart his music career. After these homies would send threats to dudes from the Parkway, which would ultimately end up with one of Lil Livers' homies being hit up. Livers would spin the bin looking for Slim. Word on the street was that Lil Livers wanted revenge. One evening, Anthony would finally catch up with Slim and hit him up. As Livers was attempting to stand over Slim and finish the job, Miss Linda would plead with him not to take her son's life. This startled Lil Livers, who would then mash out after the encounter. Slim would survive his injuries. It wouldn't be much longer after the shooting that Lil Livers would be crushed. It is alleged that it was a retaliation from Slim. Slim, a rapper known for his gritty street smart lyrics, is still considered one of the founders of what is New Orleans rap. In 2003, months after Slim was killed, police arrested Jarrell Smith, a man believed to have been responsible for Slim's death. He was later released and never charged. Sometime later, Smith was also killed. Linda Tapp Porter, Slim's mom, says while no one has been charged with her son's murder, she has found peace over the years. Even though I miss my son, I've been blessed. So I think justice has been done. It's just life and we gotta move on. In the meantime, the mother and daughter say knowing how much of an impact Slim has had on the city of New Orleans, even after his death, makes every Thanksgiving worth celebrating. That's the best part, seeing the fans and their memories online and them sharing how they really feel about him. And it's like I said, I mean, all these years later, like you said, 17, I mean, and they still love him. 